all right so in this video we'll be talking about basics of chest x-ray let's begin by knowing how to hold the chest x-ray hold the chest x-ray upright and the letter l should fall on your right or if it is written r it should fall on your left that means hold the chest x-ray in such a way that the patient is standing in front of you next thing to check is whether the chest x-ray is well centralized and well exposed now how to know whether the chest x-ray is well centralized look at the medial end of the clavicles the medial end of the clavicles should be equidistant from the spinous process here are the medial ends of the clavicle and here is the spinous process of the thoracic vertebra they should be equidistant from each other if not then you cannot comment on mediastinal shift cardiomegaly or comparative radiolucency of the lung fields next check whether the film is well exposed or no if the film is well exposed then you will be able to see the spinous process of the fourth thoracic vertebra and rest of the spinous process will be hidden by the cardiac shadow if it is overexposed then more spinous processes will be seen and the lung fields will appear translucent like this now let's look at the difference between pa view and the ap view or the posterior anterior view or the ap view this is the PA view. Here the patient is standing in front of the X-ray film. The beams of the X-ray are passing from posterior to the anterior. The patient has rotated the shoulders anteriorly and the chin of the patient is turned towards the upside. Chin is turned towards the upside to look at the apex of the lung better. AP view is usually taken when the patient is not able to visit the radiology department for the x-ray or is admitted in the ICU or is debilitated. Here the patient is sleeping and the beam of the x-ray falls from anterior to towards the posterior sides. Now here are the x-rays of the posterior anterior view and the anterior posterior view. Since the shoulders are not rotated anteriorly in the AP view when the patient is sleeping, you will be clearly able to see the blades of the scapula and their borders. So here is the scapula in the AP view. Whereas the patient has rotated the shoulders anteriorly, so in PA view, you will not be able to see the borders of the scapula inside the thoracic cavity. Also, as compared to PA view, the shadow of the heart in the AP view will be a little bit magnified. So this is magnified as compared to PA view. Now let's inspect the lung fields. We will divide the lung fields into three zones, the upper, middle and the lower zones. The upper zone is the area above the anterior ends of the second rib. The lower zone is the area below the anterior ends of the fourth rib. And the middle zone is the area between the anterior ends of the second and fourth rib respectively. Now compare the lung fields on the left and the right side and make a comment on radiolucency. If normal, the radiolucency should be equal on both sides at the same level. Now for example, if you are inspecting the apical lobes, look for the initial signs of tuberculosis in the apical region, especially behind the regions of the clavicle. If there is any bony asymmetry present, look for cervical rib also. Now look for cardiophrenic and costophrenic angles. Cardiophrenic and costophrenic angles should be sharp and well defined. If there is any obliteration, it will be pathological. These are the cardiophrenic angle and this is the costophrenic angle. Also note that the right dome of diaphragm is 0.5 cm to 1.5 cm higher than the left dome of diaphragm. That's because heart sits on the left side and liver is present on the right side. Also note for the smoothness of the left and the right dome of the diaphragm because normally they should be smoothly curved. Also look at the hilar regions. Normally the left hilum is little bit higher as compared to the right hilum. Next thing is to trace the trachea. Trace the trachea up to the carina and look for any deviations if present. After inspecting the lung fields, now we will inspect the cardiac silhouette. Now let's look at the cardiac borders. I will place the atriums and the ventricle in this chest x-ray to know their exact anatomical site in the chest x-ray. The posterior most part of the heart is formed by the left atrium. So here is the left atrium. Usually the left atrium doesn't form any borders in the chest x-ray but a small part of left atrium which is called the left atrial appendage or the left auricle forms a little of the left border of the heart. This is the right atrium. Note that the right atrium fully forms the right border of the heart. 
Now this is the left ventricle. Note that the majority of the left border of the heart is formed by the left ventricle and little is formed by the left auricle. Here is the right ventricle and right ventricle usually forms the anterior part of the chest x-ray. So if you look at the borders now, here is the aortic knuckle, here is the ascending part of the aorta, the transverse part and the descending part. So this is the aorta, this is the pulmonary conus, this part is the left auricle, this is left ventricle, this is superior vena cava, this is right atrium. Now note that the entirely right border of the heart is formed by the right atrium and the left border is formed by the left auricle and left ventricle respectively. And in the chest x-ray, the anterior part of the heart shadow consists of the right ventricle. Next comment on CT ratio that is cardiothoracic ratio. Make a perpendicular line connecting the spinous process of the vertebrae. Now draw a line A perpendicular to the vertical line towards the maximum width on the right side of the heart. Draw a line B perpendicular to the central line towards the maximum width on the left side of the heart. Compare this line A and B with the line C that is the maximum width of the thoracic cavity. Usually A plus B should be less than 50% in adults and less than 60% in infants. If it is more than 50% in adults and more than 60% in infants, it could indicate cardiomegaly. After inspection of the lung fields and the cardiac shadow, inspect the bones. Look at the rib ribs for crowding, spreading and any bony lesions. Mark the clavicles. Here are the clavicles. Look at the shoulder joints and the scapula. After inspection of bones, also note the soft tissues. Look at the muscles, subcutaneous tissue of chest and neck and in case of females, also look at the breasts. Now if you are examining the x-ray frame from very close distance, you might miss some gross opacities. So make sure that you make a little distance and examine the chest x-ray. Also some opacities are well clearly seen if you make certain angles with the chest x-ray. Now student always comment on the chest x-ray by directly focusing on the pathology and directly makes a comment on chest x-ray. But it is always beneficial to examine the film systematically from center to the periphery and later then comment on the chest x-ray.